Hello everyone. So I hope you all are doing well. So from today we are going to start Marpol. So each annex we are going to cover one by one and we are going to see the all probable question. So from annex one the most important question is the discharge criteria. Okay, for different different uh, vessels. So before moving on to discharge criteria, I have taken this extract from directly from IMO website uh, so that you get that feel of how uh, it looks like. But we'll go and touch specifically the most important points. Okay, and what you are supposed to tell uh, the surveyor. So before moving on to the discharge criteria. So first of all, we look at the special area in Annex 1. So uh, don't remember these dates. These are irrelevant. That is not important for you. So in Annex 1, Mediterranean Sea, Baltic Sea, Black Sea, Red Sea, Gulf Sea, Antarctic Sea. This is important. This Antarctic one is very special. We'll see it later on. Northwest European water, Oman area of Arabian Sea, Southern South African water. This is the newly added one you can see here. It came into effect in 2008. So this is a recent amendment to, uh, you can say, is a Annex 1 to the Marpole. Okay, and uh, this one also, if you call it Oman area. Uh, we'll not look into the special area of other annexes. We'll see when we are covering those annexes. Now, when we go on to the discharge criteria, so there are two uh, category. First, uh, first one is for oil tanker and first uh, second one is for other ships. Okay, now in oil tanker it comes for greater than 150 gross tonnage. Other ships it is uh, equal to 400 gross tonnage or uh, greater than 400 gross tonnage or less than 400 gross tonnage. So the, we have different different. Now in this 400 gross tonnage there is two subcategory discharge in special area, discharge outside special area. Now in 150 gross tonnage and 150 above uh, that is the same thing discharge in special area and discharge outside special area and then we have less than 150 uh, gross tonnage so these are broad categories that we are going to discuss now annex one as you all know that it is regulations for the prevention of pollution by oil sometime they ask you the name of the annex now these discharge criteria it comes in chapter 3 requirements for machinery space of all ships Part C, control of operational discharge of oil. These two are not important to remember, but this one is important. The regulation, regulation 15, control of discharge of oil. This one is important. Now, when we talk about uh, any discharge, see, first of all, you have to remember one statement, and that is that any discharge into sea of oil or oily mixture from the ship of 400 gross tonnage and above shall be prohibited. It is prohibited, but we can if we are satisfying these conditions and what are these conditions now this remember it is outside special area then for 400 gross tonnage and ever for all type of vessel if it is um, if it is outside special area then it will be the ship must be en route it must pass through an oil filtering equipment and uh, this must uh, ensure that it is 15 parts per million effluents whatever is the effluent upon dilution also it must not be cargo pump room bilges. It should not be cargo pump room. You can see here now the name itself. It is requirements for machinery space of all uh, ships. Now, uh, the oily mixture in case of oil tanker is not mixed with oil cargo uh, residues. Okay. Now, when we go about and talk about the part B that is discharge in special area, any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixture from ships of 400 gross tonnage and above shall be prohibited again it is prohibited in special area also but except when these conditions are met that it must be en route oil filtering equipment 15 parts per million cargo pump room bilge nahi hona chahiye it must not be from cargo pump room bilges it should not be oil cargo residues and again now there is a why in special area as i told you remember this this is in respect of the antarctic area any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixture from any ship shall be prohibited in antarctic sea amongst the special areas it is prohibited okay and uh, remember in case of any safety uh, the vessel can discharge this is also a thing that has to be remember requirement for uh, ships of less than 400 gross tonnage in all area except the antarctic sea so antarctic sea we cannot discharge from meeting and there is no condition only okay in case of ship of less than 400 gross tonnage shall be uh, 
either be retained so if it is 400 cross tons takka to humne discuss kar liya ke outside special area in special area what are the conditions and for if vessel is less than 400 cross tons then what was you are supposed to do either you are supposed to retain the mixture on board for subsequent discharge to reception facility or discharge into the sea accordance with the following provision either you retain give it to the reception facility or the shore facility or if you want to discharge then again the same conditions are given that it must be en route okay and it also must have an equipment that is approved by administration and which does not effluent with dilution it should not exceed 15 parts per million so equipment has to be so it, it, here they don't tell it to be uh, oil filtering equipment they just said that the ship has in operation equipment of design approved by administration that's it but it must ensure this exceed 15 parts per million now the oily mixture does not originate from cargo, cargo pump room bilges these are same things okay the oily mixture in case of oil tanker is not mixed with oil cargo residue now these some there are general requirement that whenever there is a visible trace of oil or observed on board uh, below the surface of water in the immediate vicinity of the ship or its way government or parties yeah, they must do some inspection okay, from where it is coming they are monitoring the wind condition sea condition okay and they must take some necessary action now no discharge shall contain chemical koi bhi chemical nahi hona jai, other substance in quantity of concentrate which has hazardous to the marine environment okay so it should not be there the oil residue which cannot be discharged into sea in compliance with the regulations shall be retained on board so whatever is not falling in this regulation must be retained on board and they must be discharged to the subsequent discharge to uh, reception facility now now when we move on to for the uh, oil tankers regulation for the cargo area of oil tankers now this is for the cargo area of oil tanker and that was for machinery space for oil tanker now this is um, uh, that was for machinery space now when we talk here then it is part c again control of operational discharge of oil regulation 34 control of discharge of oil any discharge in the sea of oil or oily mixture from cargo of area of any oil tanker shall be prohibited so for machinery space, uh, space it remains the same whatever we have discussed in the top uh, for oil tankers uh, which is uh, for from the cargo area because there also the bilge will generate now so what we are supposed to do the tanker is not within a special area first condition the tanker is more than 50 nautical mile from the nearest land so it is it is for 50 nautical mile, and the tanker is proceeding en route the instantaneous rate of discharge of oil oil content does not exceed 30 liters per nautical mile so in instantaneous rate of discharge that is given in uh, in the definition chapter okay you can read there what is instantaneous rate of discharge this can also be a question separate question so it, it should not exceed 30 liters per nautical mile now the total quantity of oil discharge in the sea does not exceed for tankers deliver uh, on or before 31st december 1979 as defined in, okay that is instantaneous rate of discharge how much it is given sorry the total quantity 1 by 15,000 for vessel which is delivered before this date means the anniversary of the total quantity of particular cargo which the residue formed a part and the tanker delivered after after this date it is 1 by 30,000 of total quantity okay this much amount of oil can be discharged the tanker has in operation oil discharge monitoring and control system slop tank arrangement hona chahiye oil uh, uh, equipment hona chahiye the provision of paragraph on discharge of it is not applicable to clean or segregated ballast okay uh, it, th these provisions are not applicable to clean and segregated ballast now discharge in special area when we talk about tankers when they are discharging in uh, uh, how they can discharge in special area subject to the provisions of paragraph 4 of this regulation any discharge to the sea of oil or oily mixture from cargo area of an oil tanker shall be prohibited in special area so it is strictly prohibited but for machinery space we already discussed uh, that is allowed now the provision of paragraph 3 of the shall not apply to the discharge of clean or segregated ballast so again it is also not applying to clean and segregated ballast okay uh, from discharging outside the special in accordance with the uh, okay so in safety condition we can discharge that was given there requirement for oil tanker for less than 150 gross tonnage now that was for oil tanker which is uh, uh, for uh, 150 gross tonnage and above now this is for a requirement for oil tanker for less than 150 gross tonnage. 
to oil tanker uh, for which the control of discharge of oil under this regulation shall be effect by the retention of oil on board so the oil is retained okay and it is given to the reception facilities it, it is stored in a storage tank shall be discharged to the reception facility unless adequate arrangements are made to ensure that any fluent is allowed to be discharged to see effectively monitored it can be discharged but it has to be effectively uh, monitored again there are some general provisions that there should not be if there is any visible traces of oil and something like that then the government and the party will go and inspect the vessel uh, so and so okay and no no uh, discharge has to have some chemicals any which doesn't cover here shall go and uh, fit into there so we have discussed two provisions for machinery space for cargo space for tankers that is 150 gross tonnage and above and uh, for less than 150 gross tonnage and above and we also discussed for uh, machinery space for other ships which is 400 gross tonnage and above and less than 400 gross tonnage and above and what all requirements are supposed to be there and, in, and we also saw the provisions for the special areas and for Antarctic Sea as well said so what are the provisions that uh, there is no discharge that is allowed in Antarctic Sea okay Thank you so much. Thank you for your valuable time. All the best.